Hi everyone, my name is Dan Mott and I'm the Director of Marketing for a, uh, at Affluent Vision. Today we have a special treat for you as we have partnered with IMS 360 to discuss how resellers are effectively using content in their marketing strategies. This webinar is part of our quarterly series aimed at helping IT solution providers to grow their business through effective marketing practices. Affluent Vision is an IT sales and marketing agency that supports hundreds of partners nationwide and beyond. We're driven to enable partners through the implementation of a consistent, sophisticated marketing strategy. Over the past 17 years dedicated to the IT industry, we have built proven methodologies and processes to, that continue to drive the success of ourselves, our partners, and our clients. So if you're looking to improve your IT marketing results, get in touch with me after this webinar. But without further ado, let's get started. Joining us today as our co-host and first panel member is Greg Hammer, Director of Agency Services at IMS 360 a creative agency dedicated to creating impactful content for the IT industry. The second member of our panel is Ashley Moken, the marketing manager for InterNetwork Engineering, a strategic solution provider offering consulting, implementation, and operational services in key architectures to mid-market and enterprise clients. And last but not least is Chris Massey, the director of marketing at for Involta, an award-winning national IT service provider and consulting firm that helps organizations plan, manage, and execute hybrid IT strategies. So what can you expect from today's webinar? Before we hop into our panel discussion, Greg is going to be sharing some thoughts on, what, on why content is so important, especially in the IT industry. Then we'll move on into our roundtable discussion with Ashley, Chris, and Greg. Our questions to the panel will cover why they have made a commitment to investing in content, how they're effectively using it, what successes they have each seen, and some of the challenges they may have experienced along the way. It is our hope that this discussion will provide some insight for you and help to fuel some ideas for your content marketing initiatives. Finally, we'll wrap up with some pretty great offers from both Affluent Vision and IMS360 that can help to kickstart your IT content marketing initiatives. So at this point, I'll hand it over to Greg and uh, he'll go through uh, some information that he's got for you. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Hope everyone's doing great today. Um, I'm sure we can all agree that content is such a large part of your everyday life. And if you think about it, it's actually pretty hard to, uh, to avoid. It keeps us informed and answers our questions. It entertains us. It makes us smile. It guides our decisions and so much more. And a lot of those same things in our personal lives as consumers or business buyers also applies to the IT decision makers that we're targeting. The buying process has changed, and IT decision makers aren't reaching out to someone with questions. They're self-educating and relying on your content to do so. That's why it should be such a big component of your inbound strategy. By creating content that leads with your brand and tells your story, you're able to attract and convert the people who are looking for what your company has to offer. And despite popular belief, outbound marketing isn't dead. Having and including content that your targets can't get anywhere else is also going to increase the conversion of your outbound tactics. In fact, I've been reading a lot lately that there are a lot of companies that are abandoning social media and moving a lot of their time back uh, into email marketing. So Convince and Convert is a company that's run by Jay Baer. He's actually one of my favorite influencers. They did a study that, in my opinion, can help anyone draw some strong conclusions on the importance of not only creating content, but also using it effectively. In that survey, 81% of companies agreed that they're able to directly tie revenue to content that was created. Respondents also listed solution-focused content as the best performing types of content. And they also said that short form video and infographics are among the best performing pieces of content. Dan also shared with me before the webinar last week an early preview of their annual state of marketing uh, partner marketing report. It identifies the challenges that partners face when it comes to IT marketing and what steps are needed to overcome them. Um, we typically have hundreds of responses to, to gain this data. And in there, they listed content as the biggest item in their marketing budget um, from the, the third biggest. And that makes up 18% of their total budget. They also said that 53% of them said that content that they had wasn't enough to support their, their sales teams. So I guess. I want to make my point. First of all, content is critical to IT marketing because IT decision makers that you're targeting want to engage with content to help them make a buying decision, just like we do in our personal lives. More than ever, the content that we create can be directly tied to driving revenue. 
And finally, marketers in the IT industry are aggressively investing in content to not only create better marketing campaigns, but also support the needs of their sales team. Dan, I don't think I could have had a better transition into our panel discussion, do you? I don't think so, Greg. I mean, that, that definitely sets us right up. Now, content is a major topic to discuss, especially when we've got three experts who have plenty of war stories that they can share with us all. So Greg and I have spent a lot of time digging into the subject matter and coming up with some questions that we think tell the full story of IT content marketing. It took a lot more time to narrow the questions down than it did to actually come up with them. I think you're right, Dan. I remember you bringing that whiteboard into the room that had like 77 questions listed on it that we talked about. Yeah, and it definitely took us a while to uh, narrow it down and we went back and forth a number of times. <laughs> So uh, if you have questions yourself, feel free to put them into the chat and uh, we'll do our best to incorporate them into the conversation. But we're gonna do our best to get through all the planned questions in the time remaining. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> the first question we have is, uh, you know, why has your organization consciously chosen to invest in content? And I had a chance to sit down with some of our panels beforehand and, and I think Ashley, you know, you had spoken specifically to uh, positioning yourselves as thought leaders. So I, I was hoping that you may be able to expand upon that a little bit for us. Sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you guys for having me. Uh, so, you know, it is really important for us to, you know, position ourselves as, as thought leaders because um, it's just really not an option anymore. Like Greg was talking about, you can't not create uh, this content, uh, you know, for your, um, you know, prospects and, you know, your, your customers. Um, we're really looking to, you know, create a connection through uh, content and, and digital assets, you know, that that are authentic and that helps guide answers to our prospects and customers, you know, problems. And, you know, if they already know what their problems are, you know, helping them identify how to implement and, you know, start that conversation. Um, you know, it's just such a complex audience journey that we, you know, content marketers in the tech space have today. So we really like to extend, you know, look at ourselves as an extension of our, you know, current, you know, customers team. So we take that same approach when we're, um, you know, crafting uh, content for visitors to our website, uh, social, uh, you know, and blog. So we try to stay uh, consistent in that respect. That's great. And, and I think, you know, there's, there's always kind of uh, the, the, you know, when we look at content, there's a difference between, you know, or are we using it for thought leadership or demand generation or, or possibly even both. So Chris, I'd love to hear from you on this one. Yeah, um, both for sure. Uh, th thanks everybody for having me. Uh, but both uh, for sure. We primarily for thought leadership, um, but hopefully that thought leadership results in demand generation. I'm, I personally think they're they're both very interconnected. Um, can't have one with the other without the other. I mean, you can, but then you have really cold and and sort of um, uh, harder to convert leads. So thought leadership um, to us is really um, showing that we've been there, done that. Right. I think that's a, a really really important um, strategy for us. It's easy to say you've done that, but if we can uh, produce a video or a uh, a white paper or a case study, for example, that uh, you know a, a customer has said, "This is what we were really struggling with," and we really knew that um, we needed help. You know, it was time to look for help, and and Volta was a was a company that could help us with. Um, it, it's it's a great it's a great piece of collateral, a great great piece of content to use in, in both uh, sides of that. That's great. Thank you both for your answers. Um, Greg, how about you? What are you kind of seeing in the industry as it relates to, you know, creating content for um, thought leadership or demand generation or using those assets for, you know, for both purposes? I think you should be using it for both purposes. And I see a lot of the clients that we work with doing that. But um, I, I think I agree very holistically with Chris's point about them being intertwined. Like a lot of the clients that we start working with who are beginning their content marketing journey um, have the idea of, hey, I'm going to create this and, you know, drive some demand with it. And while that's great, you know, we all know that content is only one piece of the puzzle and it takes a lot of great uh, marketing um, ideas and campaign planning to get that content into the right hand. So I think if you do that, you can accomplish both of these. And at its heart, I think that content needs to be 
almost devised to be more thought leadership style. The one thing that you don't want to do is say the same thing that every other person in the industry is saying. And I think that's part of the reason why there is such a drive towards more custom content. So I think when you're beginning to think about your content journey and what you need to create, I think you need to think about what your message is to drive towards thought leadership. And I think um, as, as an outcome of that, that will ultimately lead to demand generation as long as you're um, you know, using it effectively in your marketing campaigns and strategies. That's awesome. And, and I think, you know, as we move on to our, our next question that, that really kind of leads into this point. So, uh, you know, how has content helped you differentiate yourself, uh, you know, from the competition? Uh, Chris, do you have uh, any thoughts on this? Yeah, um, 2018, 2019, we've been able to break into some sort of untapped markets um, using not only thought provoking sort of white papers and case studies, but also recorded video and, and, and animation. I, I think that's been a really neat thing for us is just different ways, short clips, short, short thought leadership type areas um, to be able to get in front of some new to some new uh, faces. Um, it's helped us break sort of the, you know, in Volta's legacy, sort of the legacy way we've been known as a data center provider. And as, as you read sort of our, what we are today is we've moved into this new, you know, reseller, uh, hosting, cloud, security um, service, a company. So we almost had to go through a rebrand and, and content's been a, a great avenue for that. Um, you know, last four or five years, big focus on, on that, that, that new technology in the back end. And, you know, we're starting to get it in front using things like content syndication, um, great thought leadership articles that help people say, well, I, I thought this was a data center company. And they realize that we know what we're talking about when it comes to security and hosting. So um, I think that's that's been one of the neat ways is to show that we have a sort of a full offering now, not just a, a single line of business that we were offering in the past. Perfect. Thanks. <clears throat> Moving right along. Um, I think, you know, it was just kind of going through some of the notes that, you know, we had on uh, some prior discussions. So Ashley, if you could speak to how has content helped you build brand reputation and trust? Uh, for us, it's, uh, you know, really, we do a lot of uh, traditional marketing still. And uh, we have, you know, been challenged with how do we use, you know, um, content marketing, digital marketing to, to bolster those experiences. Uh, so one of the things that we have implemented at recent trade shows when we uh, take part in breakout sessions and we have our own thought leaders share there is, you know, creating uh, uh, nurture campaigns, you know, at the end of those. But what we do is we work Work with our presenter and get their permission to let us send emails on their behalf and we announce it during um, his breakout session and we say you know um, he lets everyone know that everyone will get an email with the slide deck of his presentation but also some blog posts and you know, additional you know collateral like ebooks and you know things that can really not only on our end help us you know nurture the customer journey um, but it's really valuable you know uh, content to them and we had one of the attendees at the trade show that sat in on one of his, you know, um, presentations and, you know, he came and talked to the presenter afterwards and we connected him with an account manager. But then it was the follow up afterwards where we sent that email on behalf of the presenter that had an ebook on, you know, um, uh, security and this is what he was interested in you know um, assessments and and he um, actually said that you know once they got the meeting scheduled one of the reasons that they decided to go with us was because he was able to you know read this ebook and then go take a look at our website and read some of our blog posts that were security specific and uh, it, it all kind of lined up and so uh, we were able to kind of take that back as a win to you know um, our management here because because it is that delicate act of balance when you're trying to be a thought leader, but show ROI um, at the same time. So it's really, it, it's helped build our brand reputation and um, really connected the dots there for leadership. 
Yeah, I just I love that story too because I, I think you know it's it's a great kind of mix between uh, both traditional marketing in person and you know digital from a virtual experience and uh, you know providing content in a kind of you know in a stream that's hey you were interested in the, in this one thing so you might also be interested in this and providing that information and really kind of you know having a custom approach to really bringing prospects through the funnel. Um, so Greg, what do you think about uh, you know content and the role that it plays in uh, building brand reputation and trust? Well, I mean, I think Ashley kind of hit it on the head with a point that I made earlier is, you know, it's not really just about creating content for the sake of creating content. You know, it's about what you do with it that's important. And I'm not saying that there is a silver bullet tactic or, or way to go out there and make sure that you disseminate that content, but it's about thinking about the customer journey and implementing it in a way that's going to um, make the experience that they're having with you different than anyone else that's out there. So not only from an inbound perspective, making sure that it's easily found on your website and in all the other digital channels in which you're, you're a part of, but finding ways to kind of straddle that digital and real lifeline and incorporate it into the marketing campaign and tactics that, that it is you guys are doing. Um, actually, I too really love that story about the way that you guys go about incorporating thought leadership content to some of your events, because that's an amazing opportunity where you're already you know in front of people talking about um, whatever it is the content is created around what a great way to follow back up with them and show them that hey not only can we get up on stage and have a subject matter expert talk about this but we also have the content to back up with our strategy our thoughts and what that difference is going to create for that company who's taking advantage of it perfect thanks Greg so moving on to our next question, how do you use content to nurture and convert leads? So I, I think we've kind of, you know, already started to, to touch on this base, a little, uh, you know, on this, on this point a little bit, uh, but let, let's kind of, you know, um, roll it forward into a little bit more of a, a technical aspect. So, you know, Chris, when we last spoke, uh, you had mentioned that you rank your content based on, you know, where uh, prospects engage at, you know, each pay, each, uh, each pay, piece of content as well as where it falls in the funnel. So if you could maybe speak to that a little bit and, and how it kind of affects uh, your usage of content and the, and the ability to nurture and convert leads. Yeah, you bet. Um, so when, when I first took over the marketing team, uh, you know, five or six years ago, you know, we had a bunch of sort of legacy content, some white papers and some case studies and a few customer testimonials. And um, we, we had a marketing automation tool in place, but we, we didn't really have good visibility into um, when customers were engaging or when prospects were engaging it. And so that was sort of my first task was to measure that and, and understand um, does something like this um, help at the top of the funnel and, or is this a, a more of a thought leadership type of a, of a piece of content that would be engaged a little bit further or when they pull down this piece of collateral, do, should that be a red flag or a green flag, right? That they're ready to buy. And so we, uh, we went through that exercise over the last three or four years to not only um, grade and score sort of all of our existing content, but every new piece of content that we're thinking about creating, that's the first conversation we have is who, who and when are we trying to engage that, that, that prospect or that customer. So we've, uh, so we've updated our, um, our marketing automation tool and we've created um, some sort of trickle nurture campaigns that um, will start with top of the funnel um, content and then bring them through and hopefully convert them by the end of the nurture campaign. All done automatically, we give sales our, uh, the ability to, to add un uh, un uh, or, you know, cold contacts or, or um, you know, sort of un under qualified contacts to those nurture campaigns. And then um, hopefully through the magic of, of automation, we get to see um, uh, we're, we're handing this collateral off at the right time during the buyer's journey. So that, that's sort of the traditional marketing side. The other thing that's been sort of a surprise to me, and, and I, did, I didn't mention this when, when we were talking about this earlier, but um, we put a big focus on sort of post-sale marketing. And um, we, we'd never really done that traditionally. I mean, our operations team that was actually doing provisioning and, and sort of taking on the customer after sales wiped their hands from it, um, you know, they, they, were, they were handling a lot of this and it was, it was done, hey, we got to send this packet out. We got to make sure that the customer knows about this, re-engage this. So we've, uh, we've, we've put a big emphasis on 
um, automating that through uh, through marketing as well, so that you know, as soon as we bring a new customer on, they're automatically getting that welcome packet. You know, they're automatically getting. Did you know this about Involta? Uh, did you know this about how to contact support or sales or some of the things that you think that that is passed on by the the sales rep uh, or the or the person that's the decision maker um, that sometimes isn't. And um, I, what I've been really really surprised with is things like quarterly um, operations newsletters that we send to our customers where we may reference a customer or talk about something that we've done for a customer but also talk about some great statistics like what we're doing on the service desk side or what we're doing on our network operations side we've been able to cross sell into accounts that again didn't know that we did that type of stuff um, just by communicating stuff that we're doing on a daily basis so th those are sort of the 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 nurture paths that we've taken and like I said the the post provisioning marketing engagement has been um, you know the biggest value to me recently and something that I'm I'm really proud of. Chris, it's so interesting. I feel like there's probably some other resellers on here who, you know, a lot of their offerings were maybe subscription based. And I'm assuming you're talking about some of your, you know, cloud services or maybe support services or things like that. Like Talk a little bit more about like, was that something that you guys have always done um, as far as like post uh, rollout marketing or was this something oh. new that you've implemented once you kind of took over the marketing? Yeah, team? something new, something new like in the last two years or so. Um, you know, when when we would sell something like a, like a subscription, we were, we're uh, you know, not not to tell all of our uh, our vendors, but big Microsoft um, partner. And so we're selling all the different flavors of Microsoft offering uh, uh, software. And so even when we'd sell Microsoft services, um, something like Office 365, um, it, it was important to make sure that they understood that not only could they buy the software from us, but you realize we can help you convert this or under, uh, convert your mail from on-prem exchange over to uh, Office 365 or help you get SharePoint up and running or, you know, you organize OneDrive better or, or even support it. Maybe you don't have that technical team um, in-house anymore. And it's, it's surprising that, um, that these things sometimes get missed or we haven't engaged the right person during the sales process. But if we send out some sort of a operational newsletter, post provisioning newsletter, and we, we share that information that this is what we can do here, you, you'd be really, you won't be surprised because you sort of mentioned that, but we were really surprised at, at how quickly we had folks coming to us, customers coming to us and say, we, we want to buy that too. That's great. I think one of one of the things that we see a lot is, you know, hey, you know, let's make content and it's going to be great. And, you know, we have all these visions for it. But, uh, you know, what do you do once you have that content? So it was one of my big questions and one of, you know, kind of the talking points for us is uh, how do you repurpose that content uh, that you've created? So, Ashley, what are your thoughts on that? We try to repurpose, um, you know, where it makes sense, but it's a, a big time saver, especially for, you know, a, a smaller team like mine. You know, we are a, a, two p a two person marketing team. Our VP of uh, uh, sales and marketing likes to joke. He only makes up a, a quarter of that. So two and a quarter if you're counting. <laughs> uh, but, you know, just recently um, we wanted to do a security awareness, um, uh, you know, uh, campaign and we wanted to do a blog post for it but we were really oppressed for time so we went back through our you know um, previous security blog posts and uh, we timed it around Valentine's Day and um, called the post you know spread love not malware and uh, we went through and we purposed a lot of our previous security blogs and matched them up with fun little conversation hearts apparently conversation hearts were a, a, a big February discussion since the factory didn't make them this year so um, we thought we would get on board with everyone else and uh, do a little something there but but yeah I mean we repurposed all of those blogs and put links uh, you know in them and then created a new blog post with you know um, minimal effort and so it you know had the effect that we wanted and it went along with the rest of the campaign uh, so I think there's a real importance in doing it but you know make sure it's purposeful and that that the timing uh, you know of it is right um, so I mean absolutely it, it, when used correctly repurposing content is um, a, it can be a lifesaver sometimes 
That's great. I, I love that campaign too, and I think it, I, think I love it, that name also. Yeah. <laughs> I think it really, uh, you know, speaks to the the point of uh, you know being able to deliver a message to the right audience. So, which kind of brings us to the next you know question is um, you know how how do you reach those audiences you know with with impactful messaging that really resonates with them? So, uh, do you develop buyer personas to guide you through the content that you create? And um, Chris, I'll let you kick this one off. Yeah, we we do a few. Um, but we, we don't do enough, right? And I think that's uh, been a big, it's a big focus for 2019 and beyond. I, I, I also um, direct our product um, development team as well. And so something we do on the product side when we're when considering a new service or, or offering um, is, is we obviously determine who those buyers are, who those, um, you know, what those value propositions are for those different types of buyers. And then you know, segment those prospects through through our marketing automation tool um, t into those different those different buyer um, personas, and then uh, obviously our our marketing efforts are hopefully targeted to those value propositions at those buyers. And uh, you know, I mean, uh, a good example of that is I, I brought up the Office three sixty five. You know, d definitely folks that are interested in the um, the back end, how it works or how to use it. Um, but there's uh, managers or decision makers that um, care more about what sort of time they're saving or costs they're saving from having that on-prem solution. And so we've, uh, we've got different messaging for those different levels, um, those different decision makers, and um, that's worked out really well for us. It's, it's helped our sales team talk more intelligently about the different offerings and obviously our marketing content. Hopefully that um, resonates a bit better. That's great. So, uh, you know, we're coming up on time here and, and I want to do our best to stay within the 30 minute window. So I, I wanted to, you know, say thank you again to all of our amazing panelists. Uh, it's been a great conversation and I know I could talk about this stuff all day, but uh, I really hope that our discussion has been beneficial for, for everyone who's joined us today. <clears throat> So if, um, if you have any questions for any of us on the webinar, please email us at info at affluentvision.com or just respond to any of the emails that you received regarding this webinar. And uh, what I'll do is I'll direct all of your questions to the appropriate person and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, as a special thank you for joining today's webinar, Greg and IMS360 are offering $500 towards your first or next purchase. They make some really great IT content, so be sure to check out their work. And Affluent Vision is now offering a free content audit, a great way to see how the content you have maps to the buyer's journey. It will help you identify the opportunities you're currently missing to both connect with and convert customers. And last but not least, if you've enjoyed this webinar, we'll be back next quarter with another. But in the meantime, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, you know the deal. It's the easiest way to stay up to date with all our mar IT marketing tips and resources. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, all.